In this video, I'm going to go over the Solar Federal Tax Credit, what it is, how to get it, and what it covers. At the end of the video, I'll also answer some common questions. The cost of solar has been dropping quickly over the years, but is still unaffordable to many people unless incentives are involved. With this in mind, the US government originally created the Solar Federal Tax Credit, also known as the ITC, to help bring down the cost of going solar. The Solar Federal Tax Credit is a dollar for dollar reduction in the amount of income tax you owe. This means if you pay any federal income tax throughout the year, you can use the solar tax credit to pay some of or all of what you pay in federal income taxes. This lowers the amount you owe out of pocket and may even result in you getting a refund on your taxes. The Inflation Reduction Act passed in 2022 extended the deadline of the ITC and set the tax credit at 30% of your solar installation costs. It will remain at 30% until 2032. In 2033, the tax credit will drop to 26%. In 2034, it will drop to 22%. And in 2035, the tax credit is set to expire. This gives people nine more years to take advantage of the full 30% tax credit. This means you can get a tax credit worth 30% of the cost to go solar. This includes the cost of solar panels, wires, mounting equipment, inverters, labor, and any related taxes and permits. The exact total cost of these things depends on the amount of solar power you install, so the cost will change from home to home. There's no limit to how big or how small your solar system can be or how much you can get on the tax credit. You can also include the cost of a battery storage system as part of the installation costs under the tax credit. You can get the tax credit if you install the solar system yourself and if your home isn't connected to the electric grid. There are a few important qualifications for the solar tax credit. One important distinction that confuses and misleads many people is the tax credit is about owing federal income tax prior to filing your taxes, not whether or not you typically owe money on your tax return. It doesn't matter if you typically owe money or even if you typically are owed money on your tax return. What matters is having taxable income. For many people, your employer collects federal income tax from your paycheck throughout the year, which you should receive a W-2 for before tax season. For you, this means you've been paying federal income tax, so you do have income tax to apply the solar tax credit dollars to as long as you meet all of the tax credit qualifications. If you work more of a business owner, contractor, or consultant type role, you probably already know that you must pay federal income tax on your income, so you have taxable income as well. Putting it all together, if you go solar while the tax credit is at 30%, and the total cost to purchase and install your solar system cost was, let's say, $30,000, you'll have $9,000 from the solar tax credit that you'll be able to use to deduct from your federal income tax. Let's also say you owe or had $6,000 in federal income tax withheld from your paycheck in 2023. In this case, you'll be able to pay the $6,000 in withheld federal income tax using the solar tax credit and still have $3,000 from the tax credit left over, which you can roll over to the following year. Since the tax credit is not refundable, you won't get any remaining balance back as a refund, but you can roll over any remaining amount of the solar tax credit for as many years as the tax credit is in effect. In this example, you should then get a refund for the $6,000 if you already had it withheld from your paycheck. But remember, this is a refund on withheld taxes, not on the tax credit itself. You can then use the refund however you please, including to pay down the cost of a solar loan if you took one. Even if you have taxable income, you still need to meet the tax credit qualifications. In order to qualify for the credit, you must be installing a solar system in either your primary or secondary residence in the US. This means you cannot get the solar tax credit on rental properties you own unless you live there for part of the year. In that case, you'll get a certain percent of the tax credit based on the percent of the year you live in the rental property. If you're able to use your residence to get the solar tax credit for this or any other reason, you may still be able to get it through Community Solar. Check the resources in the description to learn more. The system must also either be purchased outright or through financing options, but you won't qualify for the tax credit if you rent or lease your solar system even if you own your home. You must also install a new solar system. This means you cannot get the tax credit on used solar equipment or existing installations. However, if you already have solar but want to add more, you can get the tax credit for the new installation only. Similarly, if you move, you can install solar on your new home and get the tax credit even if you got the tax credit on your old home. Also, you cannot get the solar tax credit if your solar system is being used to heat your pool. The panels don't need to be on the roof. A ground-mounted system will qualify as well. To make sure you qualify, speak with your accountant first. If you do qualify, you'll simply have to fill out a tax credit form for each year that you have money left from the solar tax credit to deduct. To claim the credit, you must file IRS Form 
5695 as part of your tax return. The forms are relatively easy to fill out and tools like TurboTax can help you claim the tax credit while also submitting your annual taxes. Before we get into common questions, if you haven't gone solar yet and are looking for quotes, check out Energy Sage in the description. They can provide you with multiple quotes all online and without having to have multiple site visits to your home. Also, not all solar providers and salespeople fully understand how the tax credit works. There are countless stories of solar providers who will mislead you about the solar tax credit, may it be intentional or not. This is another reason why it's great to talk with multiple providers and always ensure these details are discussed before signing anything. Here are some common questions about the solar tax credit. Can I still get solar incentives from my state or utility if I get the solar tax credit? You can still get state and local incentives for going solar in addition to the solar federal tax credit. Not all states offer such programs, but the federal tax credit does not restrict you from other available incentives. Is the tax credit transferable? You can transfer your tax credit to another taxpayer. The person you transfer the tax credit to must also have income tax to deduct to use the credit. You cannot transfer the credit to someone without a tax liability as a way for someone without withheld or owed taxes to be able to benefit from the solar tax credit. Can I get the tax credit if I rent or if I'm not the homeowner? Renters are not completely excluded from the solar tax credit, but in general, most renters won't qualify. In most cases, as a renter, you won't have the jurisdiction to put solar on your home. If your landlord or property owner puts solar on the building and you don't contribute to the cost of the system, you won't qualify. Do solar hot water and solar roof tile systems qualify for the credit? You can get the solar tax credit for both solar hot water and solar electric. Since solar roof tiles are a solar electric technology, they do qualify for the credit. Again, if you're looking for solar providers, check out Energy Sage in the description. If you'd like to learn more about going solar, check out our other videos next. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.